guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to talk about bringing babies to Disney because I think a lot of people are gonna be super surprised when they learn what rides you can bring babies on, as in like really, really, really tiny babies. So at the Magic Kingdom, the majority of the rides there have no height requirement, meaning you can bring a baby on like a three month old baby. And I mean, obviously you'd carry them, but you know what I mean? Um, so in this video, I wanted to talk about what rides babies can go on, as well as what to do if you have older kids or adults in your group that wanna ride something that does have a height requirement, what to do with the really wee ones. So in the Magic Kingdom, it actually is a shorter list to tell you what rides do have a height requirement. So the Barnstormer, and that one is like 35 inches, so it's, it's a roller coaster for really little kids, but it is a height requirement. Thunder Mountain, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, Space Mountain, um, Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which is replacing Splash Mountain. It isn't open yet, but that one is going to have height requirement. Tomorrowland Speedway, that's another one that has a really low height requirement. It's 32 inches. And Tron, that one is 48 inches. That's the highest height requirement. So everything else you can bring a baby on. So like Peter Pan's Flight, you can go on them with a three-month-old. Jungle Cruise, Liberty Square Riverboat. Surprisingly, the Mad Tea Party, that one, I was really surprised by that. Winnie the Pooh, there's so many rides that you can go on with babies in the Magic Kingdom. Moving over to Epcot, the rides that have a height requirement are Guardians of the Galaxy, mm -hmm. Mission Space, Soarin', and Test Track, which means you can bring a baby on Frozen Ever After, Grand Fiesta Tour, Journey into Imagination, The Land, Remy, it's Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, The Seas, and Spaceship Earth. That, and like I said, I am going to give suggestions too, but I wanted to get through these first. At Hollywood Studios, that one had fewer, I would say that one had the least options for babies, but they had Indiana Jones, Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, which is like totally the best ride there, Mother Vision 3D, and Toy Story Mania. Don't need to have like be of a certain height to ride any of those. And then at Animal Kingdom, I know I'm kind of bouncing back and forth depending on the number here, but at Animal Kingdom, I'm going to just tell you the ones that do have a height requirement so that you cannot bring a baby. There's Avatar, Flight of Passage, Dinosaur, and Expedition Everest. Every Oh, and Collie River Rapids. Everything else there, you can bring a baby on. So I went through and kind of gave my, and like made a list and wrote down my suggestion. I don't have kids, but... If I, had, if I had a baby and I also had, you know, my husband with an older child that wanted to ride some of these things with a height requirement, what would the parent with the baby do? So if you are in Fantasyland, in the Mag starting off in the Magic Kingdom, if you're in Fantasyland and say they want to ride Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, I would take the baby on Small World or Mickey's Fill Her Magic or the Little Mermaid ride because they're all kind of right in that area. If... They want to ride something with a height requirement in Tomorrowland, so Space Mountain. I would take a baby on Carousel of Progress. It's like 20 minutes, nice, dark, air-conditioned. They could totally sleep through that. In, in Adventureland, if you're in Adventureland, I would go, on, go in the Enchanted Tiki Room. It's a little bit louder, but it is dark. So depending on if your baby sleeps through the dark or they would just be entertained. I mean, obviously not like a newborn, but... If they're a couple months old, up to a couple months old at least, I would say, they could be totally entertained there. And then in Frontierland, if the rest of your party wants to ride something like Thunder Mountain, you could totally do Hall of Presence, Presidents in that, again, baby would definitely sleep through that. So moving over to Epcot, there are kind of different names for things now because the Epcot construction is over. So Buzz formerly Future World, now I'm just going to say World Discovery. So if you're doing Mission Space or Guardians of the Galaxy, this one is a little bit harder. It wouldn't necessarily be entertaining, but you could go to Creations, the store, Creations Cafe, where they have like the Starbucks. You could hang out there and have a snack and be in the air conditioning or Club Cool. And I mean, babies don't drink soda. So again, depending on the, on the age, it is a nice air conditioned spot and it's, it's neat to see. So moving over to, oh no, I got ahead of myself. Soren, if some people in your party want to ride Soren, where are you going to bring a baby? 
either the land, and I ride that multiple times a trip. So you could, I mean, these things you can totally do a couple of times, you know, with the taller members of your party too, or the seas where you can, you can either go on the ride or just like look at the, in the aquarium and that's very nearby. So, you know, you're not going super out of the way, but you're at least doing something. You're not just sitting on a bench waiting. And that was Walt Disney's whole philosophy. That's why he built Disneyland so that he didn't have to sit and watch his daughter go on rides and just sit on a bench himself. So moving over to Hollywood Studios, if somebody in your party wants to ride Rock and Roller Coaster or Tower of Terror, I would recommend either seeing Beauty and the Beast live on stage that is outside. So depending on the weather and if it's hot and how hot the little kid is that you're with, that might not be a great option, but if it's nice and cool. Or the Disney Junior Play and Dance. So again, that one would be for maybe slightly older little kids. Like you wouldn't do that for a super tiny baby. And of course, there's tons of stores you can go into and just wait if that's more your jam as well. If somebody's, if the members of your party are going on Slinky Dog Dash or Alien Swirling Saucers, you could go on Toy Story Mania. Again, if it's like a newborn, that probably wouldn't be a great option. But if they're um, a couple of years old, that would be a great option. Or you can do Walt Disney Presents and then um, it's kind of like a little show. It's in the dark, nice air conditioned, dark, cool theater. Um, so that would be a good option for a little baby just to get them out of the heat. Um, and if other members of your party are doing things in Star Wars land, I would recommend uh, Muppet Vision 3D. Because again, if you have a really little kid, if they're old enough to wear 3D glasses, they'd like it. If it's a baby, I think they could probably sleep through it. Lastly, moving over to Animal Kingdom. If the people in your party want to ride Slight of Passage, I would recommend taking the baby on Navi River Journey. It's a boat ride. It's a little bit loud, but again, it's, I mean, it's cool, dark, slow boat ride. So I, I think that would be a good option. If they are riding dinosaur, I would take a baby to the, I guess not a baby, but I would take a little kid to the boneyard where they can dig and play. It's like a playground. Or again, if it's a little kid, Triceratops spin. You'll notice Animal Kingdom is, I had a harder time with Animal Kingdom. And I'll come back to that in a second. If the rest of your party wants to ride Expedition Everest, I would say, or Kelly River Rapids, there's nothing real close that I thought would be a really great option for a baby. However, you're at Animal Kingdom and there is so many like trails to watch the animals from. So I would recommend doing either the Maharaja Jungle Trek or I had to look it up because I'm like, I know there's monkeys there. I don't know what monkeys are there kind of by Expedition Everest. They're gibbons apparently. So if your child is old enough to watch the animals and get a kick out of them, I would do that. And if, the, if it's like truly a baby and they're too young, to really like see or appreciate animals. There is Creature Comforts is a Starbucks there. You can go in there. They don't have tables indoors. They do, they do have tables outside. And even if there's not a table, they have like the edge of like planters is really, really wide and people sit there. So you can definitely hang out there. There are a couple of stores as well. If you need to get into some air conditioning, you can totally do that. And now, I mean, everybody brings a cell phone so you could easily meet up with the rest of your party. But Animal Kingdom, I had the hardest time finding options to do with a baby that was near the option, the, the ride options that had a height requirement, if that makes sense. The other parks, I had a much easier time. But I wanted to share this information because like I said, I think most people probably don't know. There is so much you can do with a baby in Disney World, particularly in the Magic Kingdom. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye guys.